All right, sorry, we lost our last little bit of that video. Um, remember, I only have five minutes and hopefully that will be fixed tomorrow so you don't have to watch this whole playlist. Um, so lastly, we tested for iodine with the urine um, to see if there was any change between the control and the urine and there was not. And so that tells me that there's no starch in the urine because it didn't show a positive or it didn't turn black um, when mixed with urine. Now in the case with the urine and the Benedict's, there was a different reaction. Um, you did see the color change occur with glucose, the same as you do in this urine. So that tells me and should tell you that there is glucose present in this urine and there's a certain disease in which individuals will rid and get rid of excess glucose from their kidneys. That disease is diabetes. Um, and so hopefully this will give you enough information to finish the lab in both your notebook as well as the online assignment, even if you are gone. Uh, this slide we did cover, but it was super fast um, in class last week. And so I wanted to give you all the opportunity um, to get this all written down again. Um, so what we're looking at here are the lipids. And there's three main groups of lipids, fats, phospholipids, and steroids. And we introduced those already. The fats are made up of fatty acids and glycerol, three fatty acids and glycerol. In order to hook these two together, there's a carboxyl group on the other end here, but to hook these two together, we are going to undergo dehydration synthesis to allow a covalent bond to occur. When we do dehydration synthesis, we're going to build something new by hooking them together, but we have to remove water. And since we're making three covalent bonds, one here, one here, and one here, we have to remove three waters. And so that's what you see happening on this side. The phospholipids are slightly different, but very similar to fats. They are also made up of glycerol, but only two fatty acids. The reason there's only two is this other portion of the glycerol is not attached to a third fatty acid chain. Instead, it turns the other direction and is attached to a phosphate group, as well as some other stabilizing molecules over here. Um, we oftentimes refer to this part of the molecule as the polar head. Here is our cute little biology drawing that we oftentimes draw, a little circle with two tails. Two tails are the fatty acids and the circle is the polar head here. Think of glycerol as kind of the neck attaching to the tails and that head. The other thing on here you'll note is the difference between saturated and unsaturated fats. This fat up here or any of these fats could have been unsaturated. But when you hear that, um, what it means is that it's not saturated with hydrogens. So notice that every carbon over here is going to be surrounded by two hydrogens, meaning one would be sticking off of the top and one would be sticking off the bottom. And then that carbon would be attached to the next carbon and a hydrogen and a hydrogen and attached to the next carbon and a hydrogen and a hydrogen. They draw it in this abbreviated format just so it fits nicely in a diagram. Well, what happens in unsaturated fats, instead of having a hydrogen coming off the top and the bottom, the carbon is double bonded to the next carbon in the chain. This means that there are two less hydrogens present in this chain, or it is now unsaturated, no longer is fully condensed with all of these hydrogens. Because of these double bonds, our body um, has a little bit harder time breaking down unsaturated fats. And so these tend to be what we describe as the less healthy um, fats that we have in our diet, um, just because there's double bonds in there. And then the last thing on phospholipids is this idea of hydrophilic and hydrophobic. Hydrophilic means it loves water and is attracted to water. And this is why we find the polar heads on the outsides and the insides of our cell membrane. Because remember, phospholipids for a double layer. More on that when we do cells. Um, and so because it's polar, it's hydrophilic. The tails, because they are fats, they um, avoid water. They are nonpolar. Um, and so because of that, they sort of fear water and turn inward.